This video is going to be the primary push workout. The push workout consists of the chest, the shoulders, your triceps, and your traps. The first part of the workout we're going to do is going to be the shoulder workout. I'm going to run through all of the exercises and show you the speed and different variables to be able to do these workouts. Then we're going to get into the push-up part of the workout and the other exercises to follow from there. So you could go with no weight, and if you do, you're going to do higher reps. You could have five pound plates, 10 pound plates. I wouldn't recommend going any higher than that because a lot of people, if they use too much weight, they end up trying to throw the weight and it gets sloppy. We use good control on everything that we do to keep good muscle tension. So as the first exercise that we're going to do, it's called a lateral with a rotation. So I'm starting down here. I'm going to draw the weight up, my elbows high, and then rotate back. The speed is as such right here. I touch and go. I don't pause at all. I'm going to do a five count where basically I do one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, two, and I go as high as I can when I start really getting fatigued. I'm going to take it to failure. Failure means that it either hurts too much and I need to stop, or I start throwing the weight, which means I have bad technique or lack of range of motion where I can't complete the movements that I'm doing with the exercise. When you hit one of those three areas, you stop, if you're using weights, put the weight down, and take a one minute break. One minute break per exercise in between each. And I do three to five sets of each exercise. Then, the next exercise, number two, is a lateral riser. I come up, so my upper arm is parallel to the floor. And again, I'm using the same speed on this, and I take it to failure. Counting by fives, I might get to like 55, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go to 60 before I stop. Whatever number you make it to, try to attain the same number on the remaining sets for that particular exercise. Have a book and write these exercises down. Exercise number three, you're going to use no weights, and you're going to use your thumb. So you're going to go... From the parallel, upper arm parallel to the floor, you're going to go up and back at a 45 degree angle. So you're going to go up and back, up and back. That's exercise number three. Number four is for the rear deltoid. Not your traps, the muscle behind your shoulder, the rear deltoid. Now with these, you're going to grab anywhere from a 15 to a 35 pound weight. Just for demonstration purposes, I'll go lighter. You're going to take and drop your shoulders, and you're going to draw your elbow back and up. So I'm drawing my elbow back and up. I'm not raising the shoulders. Elbow back and up. The weight's just hanging back and up. This is for the rear deltoid. And once you're done with that, now we're going to do shoulder shrugs. And with shoulder shrugs, I'm going to go... 35s, 45s, you can use plates or you can use dumbbells. With this particular exercise, to eliminate any type of injury, I'm going to do it in two phases. I'm going to go up and down, up, shrug up and down, and I'm going to shrug back and down. Now you can do it where you go up, down, back, down, but what we don't want to do is rotate because that can end up hurting your rotator cuff. Okay, injuring your shoulders, especially if you go too heavy with weight. You see guys, when they try to do these, they'll put 400 pounds on the bar, and they'll get the bar, and they'll go, Hoo! and they'll try to shrug, and they throw their whole body in it, and they never do a complete shrug. So full range of motion is crucial on this. Now, what we're going to do, now we're done with that part of the shoulder workout with the traps, we're going to do one more exercise before we get into push-ups, and it's a one-minute evolution, one minute exercise. So you're going to just do reps however many you can for one minute. Nice and controlled. It's not speed racing. This isn't CrossFit. We're not trying to get as many as we can in a minute. We're just trying to get between 20 and 25 reps by using good control. It's not about so much the time. It's not about speed. It's about accuracy. It's about muscle contraction. So you're going to do that for one minute. Whenever you take a one minute break, that means one minute. That doesn't mean start your watch for one minute and sit there and jaw jack with somebody for three minutes. 
keep the intensity up, keep the time frames in place. Now on the push-ups, for push-up bars, you can go to Walmart, Dick's, anywhere and buy push-up bars, any, ranging anywhere from seven bucks to 15 bucks. You don't need to buy perfect push-ups, okay? Spend 40 bucks on that, that's a gimmick. You don't need that. You get the same thing here, just rotate them. Now, when you use your push-up bars, do the same position as you do your hands for bench press. Don't sit here and do a neutral position. Do you do push-ups in a neutral position? No, you don't. You do them with your palms facing down and your fingertips forward, just like this, not like this. So your push-up bars, just like this. If you want to angle them slightly, you can. So what they're doing is a pyramid. They're already at five. And so one gentleman does his set of five, full range of motion, all the way down, all the way up. And while he's doing his five, his partner's resting for five. And then he's resting for his five. Now his partner does five. So your rest is the amount of time it would take somebody else to do a set of push-ups. So if you're doing it by yourself, you just count the same number of reps you just did for your rest period. Take it from one up to whatever number you can. Your average person will take it up to 10, okay? Um, I've actually gone from one to 35 and back down to one again. And when you do this and you start really hurting, like say this guy's up to 10 and working his way down. On the last reps like that, when he goes down all the way, he's gonna have to really muscle it and force. He's focusing on his chest, he's focusing on his arms, and he's pushing through, keeping his back straight, never putting his butt in the air. So you want to maintain good control all the way through. So if you didn't want to do a pyramid like this, you can also do dumbbells where you go, or push-ups where you're going to do, say, five sets to total failure, and then take a one to two minute break in between each one of those sets. That'll go faster in a pyramid. But now in a pyramid, say you made it up to 10. The next set you want to do nine, but you only get seven, well, the next set would normally be eight. Shoot for the target reps that you would do. So you would try to get eight, try to get seven, try to get six, try to get five, all the way back down. And then whatever number you went to, the highest number, 10, let's say, times that by itself, and that's how many you've actually done in these sets. Once you're done with the push-ups, do diamond push-ups. Would you guys demonstrate a diamond push-up, please? Well, now, you can do this with push-up bars, too. One of you is... One gentleman's going to do it on the floor, and the other guy's going to grab the bars like this. So here, here's the diamond push-up. He goes down and hits his chest, okay? You go down and hit his chest, and then go all the way up. Now, if you're using push-up bars like this, you can help save your wrist. Still, he's going down and hitting his chest and then coming all the way up. Do three sets to failure like this, one minute break in between, and then after that, hit the parallel bars and do the same thing. Do a set to fill, three sets to filler, maybe five if you want to, and that will complete the push workout, all the exercises for primary push.